What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to create a refraction typography poster. Alright guys, as you can see this is the first video from my own recording studio. Uh, I know the background is a little bit messy yet, I'm still working on that as well as with the lighting. As you can see there's only light coming from here, not here yet and it leaves like kind of a hard shadow on me. But uh, don't worry, I am working on it, uh, but I'm really happy to record my first video in here. So before we actually start off, I just want to tell you, if you are new to the channel, you can actually get the project file for this tutorial, as well as all of my other project files from all of my tutorials, if you become a patron of mine. If you want to learn more, skip to the end of the video. So essentially what we're going to do today is turn this typography poster into this. So before we start off, this effect has been made with 3D software. I'm going to do mine in Cinema 4D with Octane Renderer, but this can basically be done in any 3D software. So you can do it in Blender, uh, in Cinema 4D, without Octane, all of those things will probably apply, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna use Cinema 4D and Octane. So let's take a look at a clean poster here. Uh, what I've done here is I just made a typography poster in Illustrator uh, with some black and white colors, nothing too special. The only thing that you have to note is in what size you will export your poster. So here in our folder, we can see that our exported poster is 2000 by 2829 pixels. So uh, you really need to remember that value because we're gonna use it later in the tutorial. All right, so in your preferred 3D software, uh, we're just gonna make a simple plane. So let's just drag in one here. And the size of this plane will be the size of our poster. So if you remember correctly, that's 2000 by 2829, if I'm not mistaken. Then I'll put the orientation to plus C. And now we kind of have like a poster in 3D, if that makes sense. Uh, we're gonna do it as well in the render settings immediately is change the size to the same size pixels as well. So now that's uh, out of the way. What we're gonna do is launch the live viewer of Octane. And as you can see, there's nothing too special going on yet because there's nothing really too special in this scene. What we're gonna do is make a new material, create a diffuse material and apply that to our poster here. And here we'll just open this up in node editor which you can see is on my right here. Uh, and we'll drag in an image texture. So in our case, let's just drag in the normal flat poster and drag that to the diffuse. Uh, if you wanna do this in the simple normal version of uh, Cinema 4D, what you can do is just create a new default material and put a texture under here in the color, uh, just so we're on the same page. All right, so back in our Octane version, uh, as you can see in the render preview, our poster isn't really uh, oriented well. So what we're gonna do is adjust a couple of values here in the rotation. So let's just change this to 180. And we'll check off the lock aspect ratio button and turn this to minus one. So essentially what this does is we'll scale the X axis in 100% in a negative, um, which essentially means mirroring it or flipping it. And we'll just can check this box on again. And now our uh, poster is positioned correctly. So what we're gonna do next is add a Octane camera. And we'll just click on this button so we know that we're viewing everything through our camera. And under the coordinates, let's just reset the position of the X and the Y axis, as well as the rotation. And now the trick is to basically uh, move the Z axis in so that every corner of our poster uh, fits right in the corner of our viewing frame. So let's just zoom in a little bit more. And it should be around minus 2000. Uh, I'm not really sure if this is the case, but in my case is actually the width of the poster, so that probably should be something mathematically correct. <laughs> All right. So now, as you can see, we have our camera covering our entire poster. Now the only thing we need to do is add like either ice cubes or any like 3D sculpture made of glass. What we're gonna do, in my case, we're gonna add a cube. We'll make the cube maybe like 600 by 600 by 600. We'll check on fillet. And we'll turn it up to maybe like 50. And we'll add some segments. And the reason why we're adding segments is basically because we wanna maybe like distort this a little bit. As you can see, this is now a perfect cube and we don't really want it because I kinda wanna turn it into an ice cube. So I'm gonna press C on my keyboard to make the object editable. 
and we'll just add a displacer object and I'm holding shift on my keyboard to make it a child of our cube here, as you can see here. All right, so under the shading, we'll just add a simple noise shader and we'll scale the noise shader up a little bit by turning the global scale to maybe like 5,000. And under the object, we'll just increase the height of our displacement. And maybe we'll add another one with a little more subtle displacement. So we'll just change the noise seed as well. And we'll maybe like do, turn this one to 2000 pixels or a percent, sorry. All right, so now we kind of have like a deformed ice cube. And as you can see, we just drag this in front of our poster, but nothing really happens. And that's because we haven't given it a material yet. So let's just go to materials, create a new specular material and drag that onto our ice cube. And as you can see, immediately we have the achieved effect. So there are basically two sliders which you can play with uh, to adjust this thing to your liking. Uh, the first one I'm gonna do is actually remove the reflection. As you can see, you can add some reflection, but uh, in my case, I don't really like it that much because I wanna feel it, make it look a little bit more unnatural. Then the two things that you can change are the dispersion and the index. And this means the index of refraction, if I'm not mistaken. Basically, what these do is the dispersion, as you can see, disperses the light, which gives these like nice uh, colored gradients. Uh, basically, what this is doing is splitting the light, uh, kind of like a light prism, if you've seen those. And if you don't know what I've been talking about, look at Pink Floyd's uh, Dark Side of the Moon album cover. <laughs> um, anyways, under the index, we can also change the index of refraction. And that's basically the way that our object behind our uh, cube gets displaced, as you can see. So this is looking pretty cool. Maybe we we'll, should rotate our cube a little bit. Like this. And of course, you can do this with any type of object. You can also just uh, simply put this into a cloner and do like some circles or whatever you like. Uh, so this is the reason why I kind of wanted to remove the reflection because you can see there's actually like a reflection of the poster there. And if you remove that, it's getting like clean and uh, the darker colors are basically the same as the background here. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply some animation. What I'm first gonna do is put this object into a null by pressing Alt or Option G on my keyboard. So this thing is now basically grouped and all of the uh, coordinates of the ice cube are now put on the null here. So if I go to my cube now, all of the positions are just reset, uh, which is nice for me. So this way I can just easily manipulate the rotation of the axis here. So if you don't know how to animate, basically click on one of these keyframes. Now they turn red, then move your timer to whichever uh, position you want. In my case, I'm gonna put it to the 80th frame and type in 360 degrees. Now this thing turns orange and now we just click to, uh, on this one more time to make it red. And as you can see in the timeline, this is the second keyframe. So this is what happens now. So yeah, that way we can get a nice animation done. And as you saw in the preview window, this works pretty well. Let me just save this up real quick. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm also gonna show you how to do it without Octane. So let me just remove the live viewer here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is remove both the Octane materials and I'll apply this material to our poster, which was the regular uh, diffuse material that we just used uh, beforehand. This is just the regular Cinema 4D material that I used earlier in the tutorial. So let me just open this up and remove the reflectance a little bit. And as you can see, this thing is also not properly rotated. And I'm gonna double check that by opening my preview window. So what I'm gonna do is press Alt or Option R on my keyboard. And this basically gives you a preview of what your render is gonna look like in lower quality. Um, so to change this image up in uh, the normal Cinema 4D, what I'm gonna do is click on the texture drop-down button here, put this into a layer. So now our image is into this layer, and if we click on the layer, we can add effects to it. And what I'm, effect I'm gonna look for is transform, and this way we can actually change the angle. So I'm gonna turn this 180, and minus one on the X scale, and as you can see, now we have our uh, image properly rotated. So the next thing we're gonna do is add another material. 
apply that to our ice cube here. And instead of clicking on color and reflectance, I'm going to just click on transparency. And as you can see, you can also change the index of refraction here. And let me just load up the render preview. This essentially gives you the same effect. Sadly, I think because uh, in Cinema 4D uh, we use a biased render engine, while Octane is an unbiased render engine, uh, we cannot change the dispersion index uh, rate. And someone can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about this. Uh, I just wanted to show you, you can definitely create a similar image just using Cinema 4D's vanilla tools. Alright guys, so that's it for this tutorial. If you want to get the project file for this, uh, both the Cinema 4D and the Octane version of this, uh, as well as the Illustrator file, you can get it by becoming a patron of mine. So if you don't know what a patron is, basically by becoming a patron, you will be able to support me in the channel and keep up the weekly videos. But in return for that, you get access to all of my project files, a 15% discount in my asset web store and an exclusive Discord role. And if you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos and tutorials, including a full series on how to start your own clothing brand as well as even more project files. I know. <laughs> so big shout out to my patrons. If you want to become one yourself, there is a link down in the description. Besides that, I would really appreciate it if you leave a like, a comment and a subscribe if you haven't already to support the channel. And with all of that being said, this was Tom from Dot Labs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.